I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. President Trump is pursuing a strategy to deliver on his agenda using the power of executive orders. In part, he says, to force Congress to do its job. Despite Republican control of the House and the Senate, they failed to pass any major elements of the president's legislative agenda. In play, or maybe not in play, infrastructure, keeping the government open by agreeing on a 2018 budget. Changes to the Affordable Care Act, a solution for dreamers and immigration reform, and the top GOP priority, an overhaul of the federal tax system. I'm here to discuss the likely outcomes of current White House and congressional strategies are Republican political strategist Ford O'Connell and Democratic strategist Jamal Simmons. Nice to see you guys. Good to see Let's you dive here. right in. President Trump has signed 50 executive orders since. Um, by October 12th, he had. Uh, some people say the focus is rolling back anything that President Obama has done. Other people say, no, he's really trying to deliver to his base. What do you think is the strategy for you? Well, I basically think that President Trump wants to make good on several campaign promises. The clock is ticking. Congress is useless and uh, portions of his base are frustrated and he knows he's got to deliver and this is one way to deliver. But obviously he'd like to get a big key legislative win in Congress on tax reform. That is definitely his top priority. We'll talk about tax reform in just a moment. It feels very chaotic. I mean, I don't, you don't feel like there's some negotiation toward a win. Anything Obama did, let's kill it. It's also, this is a total and complete utter failure. I mean, you've got a president of the United States of the same party as the majority of the Senate and the majority of the House of Representatives. They can't pass a single major piece of legislation. We are now into October of his first year in office. By this point, President Obama had already passed an economic package, and they were on their way to passing a health care plan. Um, this Ford is just is fidgeting this, in his chair so bad. Because, 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 because what you've just done is made a word play on the legislative process. In the first two years of President Obama's term, he almost nearly had 60 senators. To pass legislation in Washington, you don't need a majority in the Senate. You actually need 60 votes. Or and you have to do business with the other party. Or you have to do business with the other party, Which something that President Obama did not <laughs> do in his first two years. And the only time you can pass something with a majority in the Senate is through budget reconciliation. So that is why we're, we are where we are. The Democrats <laughs> are in a lot of chaos. The Republicans are probably in a bit more chaos right now, right? I mean, that's well, fair that, to well, say. Yeah, but we lost our election. That's the thing. We lost our election. They won theirs. It's their turn to govern. And they're not doing it. They definitely do have to deliver. It is their turn to. Go it is the Republicans' turn to govern. But at the same time, I mean, what the Republic, what the Democrats like to say is, "Gee, look at what a mess the Republicans are." The Democrats are in a lot of trouble too, particularly about which direction they go and what exactly it is they want Listen, to accomplish. Listen, neither of you is cheering me up very much about the state of America today. But we move on. So, tax reform. You think he's going to be able to bring us tax reform? Well, the question is whether he gets 60 votes or he does it just with Republicans only. He has a chance to potentially get 60 votes. But understand what it is he wants to do. He wants to put money back in the pockets of hardworking Americans. He also wants to boost wages and boost jobs, but that really can't fully occur without 60 votes, which means he needs at least eight Democrats in the United States Senate, if all Republicans agree. And essentially, he's got a chance, a very small chance, to get that done because there's 10 Democrats up, again, who want to save their political livelihood in states that he won in 2016. It could happen. Most likely, we're only going to get tax cuts, though. Yeah, here's the problem. If you're cutting taxes for people at the top end of the, of the uh, income bracket, even more, the people who are in the middle and the lower class who've been catching it for the last 20 years are going to be put in a tougher position. And if you want to run an election where you're telling people you took taxes down from the wealthy from 35 percent to 20 percent, let's have that conversation. Well, no, but that's, that's the whole point. This isn't, everyone says that tax reform is the devil's in the details. That's not true. It's a messaging game. Based on what the White House is framing it right now, they're saying that middle class households are going to get about $4,000 back annually on their salary. Now, that is a lot for a lot of people. $4,000 a year is a ton. And here's the thing. Here's, we, we, have some, we have some real problems to address. We've got to figure out how do we educate a population for a more skills-based economy. We've got to figure out how do we knit together a society that's going to be more diverse in the next 20 years than it was in the last 100. We've got some real problems. Taking money out of the federal treasury is not going to help solve those problems. Well. Jamal Simmons and Ford O'Connell. We will leave it there. Thank you, guys. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet.